we all may glance at the sent time, delivery time and scene time of the message that we had sent in the WhatsApp. This is an indication to let us know about when did we send the message, when did the receiver's mobile receive the message and when did they see the message. This kind of asynchronous data transfer between two independent units requires that control signals be transmitted between the communicating units to indicate the time at which data is being transmitted. Now, let us discuss about the applications of asynchronous data transfer. Asynchronous data transfer is used in each and every communication devices like social networks, SMSs, or short message services, chatting applications. ATMs, login pages in websites, and military applications, etc. The transfer of data between two units may be done in parallel or serial. In parallel data transmission, each bit of the message has its own path and the total message is transmitted at the same time. This means that an n bit message must be transmitted through n separate conductor paths. In serial data transmission, each bit in the message is sent in sequence one at a time. This method requires the use of one pair of conductors, or, one conductor and a common ground. Parallel transmission is faster but, requires many wires. It is used for short distances and where speed is important. Serial transmission is slower but, is less expensive since it requires only one pair of conductors. Serial transmission can be synchronous or asynchronous. In synchronous transmission, the two units share a common clock frequency and bits are transmitted continuously at the rate dictated by the clock pulses. In long distance serial transmission, each unit is driven by a separate clock of the same frequency. Synchronization signals are transmitted periodically between the two units, to keep their clocks in step with each other. In asynchronous transmission, binary information is sent only when it is available and the line remains idle when there is no information to be transmitted. This is in contrast to synchronous transmission, where bits must be transmitted continuously to keep the clock frequency in both units synchronized with each other. A serial asynchronous data transmission technique used in many interactive terminals employs special bits that are inserted at both ends of the character code. With this technique, each character consists of three parts, a start bit, the character bits, and stop bits. The convention is that the transmitter rests at the one state when no characters are transmitted. The first bit, called the start bit, is always a zero, and is used to indicate the beginning of a character. The last bit called the stop bit is always a one. An example of this format is shown in the given figure. A transmitted character can be detected by the receiver from knowledge of the transmission rules. When a character is not being sent, the line is kept in the one state. The initiation of a character transmission is detected from the start bit, which is always zero. The character bits always follow the start bit. After the last bit of the character is transmitted, a stop bit is detected when the line returns to the one state for at least one bit time. Using these rules, the receiver can detect the start bit when the line goes from 1 to 0. A clock in the receiver examines the line at proper bit times. The receiver knows the transfer rate of the bits and the number of character bits to accept. After the character bits are transmitted, one or two stop bits are sent. The stop bits are always in the one state and frame the end of the character to signify the idle or wait state. At the end of the character the line is held at the one state for a period of at least one or two bit times so that both the transmitter and receiver can resynchronize. 
The length of time that the line stays in this state depends on the amount of time required for the equipment to resynchronize. Some older electromechanical terminals use two stop bits, but newer terminals use one stop bit. The line remains in the one state until another character is transmitted. The stop time ensures that a new character will not follow for one or two bit times. As an illustration, consider the serial transmission of a terminal whose transfer rate is 10 characters per second. Each transmitted character consists of a start bit, 8 information bits, and 2 stop bits, for a total of 11 bits. 10 characters per second means, each character takes 0.1 second for transfer. Since there are 11 bits to be transmitted, it follows that the bit time is 9.09 milliseconds. The baud rate is defined as the rate at which serial information is transmitted and is equivalent to the data transfer in bits per second. 10 characters per second with an 11-bit format have a transfer rate of 110 baud. The terminal has a keyboard and a printer. Every time a key is depressed, the terminal sends 11 bits serially along a wire. To print a character in the printer, an 11 bit message must be received along another wire. The terminal interface consists of a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter accepts an 8 bit character from the computer and proceeds to send a serial 11 bit message into the printer line. The receiver accepts a serial 11-bit message from the keyboard line and forwards the 8-bit character code into the printer. Integrated circuits are available which are specifically designed to provide the interface between computer and similar interactive terminals. Such a circuit is called an asynchronous communication interface, or, a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. Asynchronous serial communication is widely used for character-oriented, that is, one-byte transmissions. Whereas synchronous communication is widely used for block-oriented, that is, multiple bytes transmission. Here, asynchronous transmission uses start and stop bits. Now, let us compare the characteristics of asynchronous serial communication with synchronous serial communication. In transmission technique, asynchronous used serial communication when the synchronous is used the parallel communication. If we consider the comparative capacity, the data transmit one character at one time in asynchronous, and, the data transmit block at one time in synchronous. If we consider the distance limitation, asynchronous can transmit for long distance and synchronous can transmit only for short distances. In sync method, asynchronous is using start and stop bit, and, synchronous is using clock speed. Asynchronous is having low speed due to serial transmission and, synchronous is more efficient due to parallel transmission. Cost for asynchronous is simple and cheap, synchronous is expensive due to mechanism. Bandwidth loss in asynchronous is 20 to 30 percentage over capacity and synchronous is 5 percent over capacity.